Okay, the slope of a line can be described in many different ways. So I have several different things written out here. But the thing that we need to keep in mind is that it is always the ratio. Well, what does the word ratio mean? Ratio is like a fraction, right? It's the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change. And we always, always use the letter M to represent slope. Okay, now this may sound a little bit scary at first, but we're going to talk about it and figure out what it means. So, some different ways that you may see slope written. It's always the letter M. You might see this ratio. This little triangle symbol here is actually the Greek letter delta, and delta means change. So the change in the Y's over the change in the X's. Well, remember whenever I said vertical change compared to horizontal change? Well, think about vertical. That's up and down. That's the Y direction. Horizontal is left and right. That's the X direction. So the delta, or the change in Y over the change in X, is another way of saying vertical change compared to horizontal change. And now here I have written it out in words. So it's actually the change in Y over the change in X. Now a more simplified way of saying it, and the way we'll say it quite often, is rise over run. And think about it, rise meaning the up and down direction, run meaning left and right. So that's still how things are changing in the Y direction compared to how they're changing in the X direction. Now there's also a formula for slope, and that formula is here. Um, that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can use this formula if we're given two points. So if we had a first point with an x and a y in it, and then a second point with an x and a y in it, the ones and the twos represent first point, so this would be the, y, the x1 and y1 because it's coming from the first point, and this would be the x2 and the y2, meaning the x from the second point and the y from the second point. That's what that notation represents. All right, let's look at slope and see if we can figure out a real example of it. Here I have a line that is drawn in and um, that should have arrows on the end, but my program didn't put them there. Let's just grab a couple of points off of this line. Here's a point right here. That's the point 0, 2. And um, here's another point. That would be the point 5, 5. Okay, remember whenever I said that it is the change in Y compared to the change in X. So if I were going to go from this point to this point over here, I would need to rise up three units, and then I would have to run over five units. So the rise over the run would be three over five. This is the slope of this line. Now the neat thing about slope is that it's the exact same for the entire line. So just because I chose these two points and I got a slope of three-fifths, if I had chosen any two other points, I would have gotten the same exact thing. Let's choose a couple different ones. Um, how about this point right here? That's the point negative 10, negative 4. And then let's use that same 0, 2 right here. If I were going to go from this point to this point, I would have to rise up 6 units and run over 10 units. So that leaves me with a rise over a run, oops, that didn't come out very well, of 6 over 10, which doesn't look the same, but if I simplify it, 2 will go into 6 3 times, and 2 will go into 10 5 times. So I still got the exact same uh, number for our slope. That's because it's running at the same pace the entire way. So this is how we find the slope of a line.